The focus of today's topic is the new kid on the block, digital PCR. As a next generation evolution of quantitative real-time PCR, digital PCR offers some unique advantages over real-time PCR that many of our real-time PCR users are starting to tap into. In addition to the increased precision and sensitivity offered by digital PCR, I was recently asked, digital PCR eliminates the need to run negative controls and does not require the use of biological controls, right? Let's examine this in more detail. First, can digital PCR be run without the use of biological control, also known as a calibrator? The short answer to the question is yes. Through partitioning the sample into thousands of independent PCR chambers, digital PCR offers the capability to count molecules and generate an absolute measurement, typically output in copies per microliter. However, as is often the case with the short answer, this has caveats and is often not sufficient to answer many of the questions a researcher might be trying to answer. Let's use a typical gene expression experiment as an example. If I am trying to understand the expression of a gene, my digital PCR measurement tells me about the number of transcripts in the sample, but does not relate it to the expression level of the gene of interest in the cell. That is, if one sample has a higher count, is that due to the higher gene expression or simply due to the fact that RNA in that sample represents a greater number of cells? So how does one deal with this issue? An approach that ties the measured transcript concentration to the biology being tested must be found. While there is no single answer for all questions being asked, this could be as simple as carefully controlling the number of cells processed through the workflow or Barring a trick from the qPCR world, the use of an endogenous control. There is one other point to consider with this question. Having some type of positive control included in the experimental design helps to confirm that the system is working as designed. Remember, that includes the instrument, assays, and samples, everything that contributes to making the final measurement. Incorporating a known sample in your experimental design can help you to identify when things are not quite going according to plan. So what about the need for negative controls? Well, I'm guessing you already know the answer based on the previous discussion. Negative controls enable us to monitor critical parameters of our measurements, such as false positives that can occur from sample or assay contaminants or non-specific activity of our assay. They're also useful in understanding the fluorescent signal associated with our negative population and can aid in setting our threshold between our amplified and unamplified well populations. So yes, I would encourage you to include negative controls in all your experiments, including digital PCR. So I hope that this has been useful to your understanding of how to approach and design a successful digital PCR experiment. Should you want to know more, I highly encourage you to seek out a copy of the digital Mikey guidelines. And lastly, should you want to know more about digital PCR in general, I encourage you to watch the following videos. Do you have any real-time PCR questions? Just ask TACMAN. Ask us on Twitter using the hashtag AskTACMAN, message us on Facebook, or visit lifetechnologies.com forward slash AskTACMAN.